Hi everyone. Thank you for thank you all for attending this difficult cloud integration virtual meetup. Uh, today I will be presenting how to implement an end-to-end -end API lifecycle with difficult cloud integration. I'd like to start by giving you a quick overview of typical cloud integration. Typical cloud integration has a wide range of capabilities that provide a simplified way to integrate applications and data quickly. So it provides uh, tailored experiences for various users and empowers users to collaborate and easily implement the entire API lifecycle. It also provides a wide range of connectors, allowing you to connect to virtually any endpoint. Typical cloud integration is also designed to be an open platform and built with open source software to drive innovation. And finally, it offers great flexibility, flexibility sorry, to its user, allowing them to choose how to consume product capabilities and deploy apps anywhere. So, so you're wondering how can you use a typical cloud integration to complete a whole API lifecycle? Well, typical cloud integration provides various powerful capabilities that you can use, but we will focus on the following ones. Uh, first, we have API model and mock to complete the first phase of an API lifecycle, which is the design. Then you can use the selection of different apps provided by typical cloud integration for the second phase, which is the implementation part. And finally, you can use the API control center to manage and secure your endpoints, which completes the API lifecycle. So as I said, Tuco Cloud Integration provides a very collaborative approach to implement an end-to-end -end API lifecycle. Here is what it should look like. Uh, during the design phase, the API designer would use API model and mock to design the API specification, mock the API, and share it with the collaborators so they can try the API and share their feedback. And then once the API specification is finalized, um, we can move to the implementation part. Um, the developer starts implementing the API, tests it locally, and deploys it to the cloud with the integration apps of Tico Cloud Integration. The last phase is managing and securing the API endpoints um, so they can be safely published and shared. So the API product manager would publish the endpoints with the managed capability. So now I'd like to show you a quick demo of how to use the typical cloud integration capabilities that I've previously mentioned. Um, so first of all, I would like to show you how to create an API specification with API model and mock. Uh, it's based on open API specification, but this capability is simplified enough that you don't need any deep knowledge about open API specification. So you can create an API specification by clicking here. Um, give it a name. In our example, we want to um, simulate a bookstore API. So I want to have an endpoint to retrieve a specific book by using its ISBN. So our API specification has been created, but there is no resource yet. Uh, we want to be able to search books with the ISBN. So let's start by adding uh, a get method. Here you can set the path. Uh, I will use the ISBN as a path parameter. So it's a get method, so we don't have any uh, request header here, but uh, we only have the query parameter that we have defined. Um, but if you if you use, let's say, a post method, you will have to define your request header just here. OK, so now let's go to our response tab to have a look at the responses. By default, a 200 response is generated. So we can click on it and configure um, the, the response we want to be returned. So we can, we can generate a JSON schema by providing a sample of data. Let me get my sample of data. and paste it here. So you can just generate the schema here and save. You can also create other responses if you need to, let's say like 500, for example, here. Um, you, can, you also have the possibility to export the specification here if you'd like. And here you can have a preview of your API documentation. Um, so yeah, 
that, that's it. Uh, your API specification has been created. So now let's see how we can create our mock API based on that specification. Um, so here is the API specification that we have created. You can just go here and create the mock app. So the mock app will be generated based on the API specification and the mock response will also be automatically generated. We'll just wait for it to finish scaling. Okay, now it's done. We can try and test our mock API. So let's provide an ISBN here, let's say just one. Uh, and let's see what it returns. So as you can see, it's returning the mock response that we have defined earlier in the, um, in the API documentation. And yeah, that's just how you can mock and test an API before implementing it. So once you agree on the API specification and you have made the last changes to it, you can use it to implement your app. So now let's go, let's go ahead and build our app. Um, so uh, we will start by creating a Flogo app. And you can import the Swagger specification that you have created with Deepco Cloud integration. So you just go here and we see it here, book source spec. That's the one and create. So as you can see, a HTTP trigger and a flow have been automatically generated from the API documentation. So I explained this concept real quick to you. Uh, a trigger is um, a trigger receives events from external sources to execute the flow. Um, in in our case here, the trigger receives a HTTP message, and this is the flow. So what we call a flow is a set of actions to process events in the way you would like to as to implement the business logic. I'd like to show you how to add an activity to this flow. Um, let's move this return activity. And uh, let's say a log activity to print a, a, just a simple string. Um, let's say I want to print um, the ISBN, which is in the path parameters. And you can save and that's it, yeah, that's how you create an activity. Um, now I just want to show you how quick it is to deploy an app with Tipco Cloud integration. Uh, so you can just go back and uh, you can click on push to build the application and deploy it to Tipco Cloud. It's just simple as. Um, but to save us some time, because it's deploying here, to save us some time, I have pre-made another bookstore API with more complex business logic that calls an external API to return a book. Uh, so we can use this one to taste it. Here it is. So this app is already deployed and is running one instance. Uh, we can switch to the endpoint tab to test the application's endpoints. So let's go and test that endpoint. So it's also a get method. Um, here, let's click on try it out and let's put an ISBN. So now, as you can see, it has returned a book and it's not, it's not defined by, we haven't defined it uh, previously. It's not the mock response, it's the actual response that the app is returning this time. Um, so now I would like to just set um, this endpoint on private just so I can show you how we can publish it using Tipco Cloud Integrations Control Center. Oops. Sorry. Say it to private, yes. So this is the Control Center uh, where API product managers can secure, govern, and manage the API as products and publish them via the developer portal. We'll start by going to API definition where I have already created an API definition for our bookstore. Uh, so 
An API definition is a set of configurable properties that specify the function of an API. Um, after creating API definitions, you can create endpoints and method definitions for this API. So uh, let's go ahead and create an endpoint. Let's give a name to our endpoint. I will go for something simple, let's say just books or endpoint. And here you can customize the public endpoint address. You could put anything, but I'll just go for book and ISBN again. So that's the address you will use to call the endpoint. And since I have deployed my app to Tipco Cloud and set it to private, you can use Tipco Cloud Mesh to discover it. So let's see if I can find it. Yeah. Let's select it. And here you can create your endpoint. OK, so some other things that you can do from this page. You have a few tabs to set a complete configuration of your API definition. Uh, for example, in this tab, you can um, set the security of your API definition. Uh, you can create sets of errors here. In this tab, you can specify the roles that will have access to the API definition in the portal. And you also have a tab to control the performance of your API and a history tab of the different changes you've made to your API. So another thing that I would like to show you uh, that we can do with the control center is setting API packages to combine multiple APIs into a package and manage this package as an API product. So I, I have created one package for the bookstore here. So that package would combine different APIs related to books, for example. Uh, then you can also, um, uh, then you can also, sorry. Then you can also create different plans in your API package. Uh, so a plan controls how the consumers can subscribe to your API, like subscription plans. Um, each API plan constitutes a set of rules, limits, and filters to be enforced when developers make calls to the specific API methods or resources. Uh, for example, you could have a plan limiting the users to only like 100 API calls per month, and another other the one with unlimited call. So yeah, you can control all of that with the control center. And that concludes our preview of how you can implement an engine and API lifecycle with typical cloud integration. And now I would like to encourage you to try Tipco Cloud integration. There's a free trial available on cloud.tipco.com. There's a lot of information online if you need it in the following links. And next week, we have another fantastic Tipco Cloud integration session with Karan. He will talk about adapting Cloud Native for your existing Tipco BusinessWorks integration workloads. Mm -hmm.